and with item two, petroleum and other minerals development, prohibition of onshore hydraulic fracturing, Bill 2016, change from prohibition of the exploration and extraction of onshore petroleum bill 2016, the Doyle second stage. The question is that the bill be now read for a second time. I call on the Minister to speak. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity today to speak on Deputy, Deputy Tony McLaughlin's bill concerning the prohibition of petroleum exploration and extraction in the Irish onshore. I'd like to congratulate uh, Deputy McLaughlin uh, on having his bill progressed uh, this far. A uh, considerable achievement for a private member's bill to be, bill to be debated in both Dáil and Shannad Airden. I look forward to his continued progression uh, of this, the first private member's bill, certainly in this government's tenure uh, to enactment. Uh, Deputy McLaughlin's bill has a clear focus, uh, and that is to prohibit the use of hydraulic fracturing to explore for or extract oil or gas in the Irish onshore. I would like to briefly reflect on the background of the question of fracking in Ireland. As senators may know, in 2011, uh, three companies applied for licensing options to explore in, in onshore Ireland the possibility of extracting gas from tight shales by means of hydraulic fracturing. It was considered at the time that there was insufficient scientific evidence on which to base an environmental assessment as to whether this activity could be carried out in a manner that would protect the environment and human health, and the EPA was therefore requested to carry out independent research to establish the potential implications in this regard and to make a recommendation as to the feasibility of fracking uh, in Ireland. Indeed, I'm on the record myself as having raised concerns with regard to such matters as, uh, as, as, um, as well as long-term uh, integrity. Uh, the potential release of toxic ch chemicals from the ground as a result of fracking and the significant and considerable potential implications by virtue of diverse uh, housing uh, that the use of this technology may have on people in rural communities. As I've already stated in Dáil Airden, it has always been my view that considerations surrounding the use of new technologies should be scientifically examined and peer reviewed. The EPA-led joint research programme into the environmental impacts of uncon conventional gas exploration and extraction, which concluded in November 2016, has done precisely this. Deputy McLaughlin's bill proposes to prohibit ex exploration and extraction of petroleum in the Irish onshore due primarily to the concerns he has raised and those recognised and substantiated in the EPA-led research programme concerning the potential for this activity to cause pollution to groundwater and the associated potential impacts to human health, agriculture and tourism. A number of amendments proposed at the report stage of this bill in Dáil Airden sought to extend the prohibition on hydraulic fracturing into the offshore. I would like to make it clear in this House today that none of the issues of concerns relating to hydraulic fracturing in the onshore apply in the offshore, where hydraulic fracturing is only used as a, te as a technological mechanism in certain circumstances that do not occur routinely in conventional drilling. I would like to, to make it very clear on this point, there is no unconventional exploration offshore Ireland such as that found onshore USA. Due to the high density of wells required and the cost of development of such reservoirs, this is simply not feasible in an Irish offshore environment. If a prohibition on hydraulic factoring in the Irish offshore were to be included in this bill, this would limit the operator's ability to assess and quantify any petroleum volumes encountered and would likely place Ireland at a serious competitive disadvantage competitively with the international petroleum industry. At report stage in the Dáil, we had two separate issues conflated into one. Firstly, the concerns regarding the impact on local communities and groundwater resources, and secondly, whether the continuation of exploration in the, in, in the offshore is consistent with our climate change obligation. With regard to the first concern, the EPA-led programme to research uh, was, was clear in its findings with regard to the legitimate concerns of potential pollution of groundwater and air quality, not to mention the lack of an integrated bespoke statutory framework governing fracking. The prohibition being introduced by this bill adequately addresses these issues. With regard to the second issue raised, I would like to, cl to clearly establish that the Energy White Paper aligns energy policy and climate action policy and exploration policy, leading the transition to a low carbon economy by 2050. It is important to note, however, that there will remain a significant role for natural gas, for example, as a transition fuel. If Ireland manages to benefit from the level of offshore exploration in the Atlantic margin in terms of another hydrocarbon find, then that could have a substantial positive impact on the Irish economy, such as reduced spending on imports, increased exchequer resources for services and investment, and more opportunities for employment and business. I'd like, I would like to emphasise that the prohibition of a drag fracturing in the offshore has not been considered uh, in the context of the EPA-led joint research programme, nor is there any scientific research of this type of which I am aware relating to the offshore or indeed any grounds for concern in this regard internationally. 
The findings of the EPA-led research programme, together with Deputy McLaughlin's bill, have been scrutinised by the Joint Oireachtas Committee on Communications, Climate Action and Environment, and the Committee has support, supported the introduction of a statutory ban on onshore fracking in Ireland. There is separate private members' legislation tabled with regard to the potential to introduce a, a prohibition on hydraulic fracturing in the offshore, and this will be, in my view, a more appropriate vehicle for the discussion of this matter when the appropriate research has been done and proper consideration of this matter has been undertaken. I would like to commend Deputy McLaughlin again for his endeavours and wish him well with the onward progression uh, of this bill. Good morning. For my good, uh, and, our, uh, and next I'm going to call on uh, Senator Terry Layden. You have eight minutes. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, I'd like to welcome the Minister again to the House and, and uh, wish him well in this. You work it's certainly a continuity of what you've been doing for some time and um, i'd like to interrupt senator Layden. i take it we will be supplied with scripts of the minister's speech through the chair please senator yes through the chair okay now that they have been sent through over, the chair i haven't a private secretary because it's all new so um no private do you, secretary, so you have a car to, huh do you get a car i just about have a car oh yeah. excellent <laughs> <laughs> sure for Senator Layden has a little floor. bit of disruption when ministers have changed. So the minister hasn't been changed really, he's been just continuing his work. Um, and, uh, and rightly so, we're delighted in the west of Ireland to have the minister kind of in the Galway area beside us in Roscommon. And indeed, his colleague, uh, Minister Cannon, as well, has been appointed, and uh, Joe McHugh and others. So we're delighted that they're there, and uh, of course, uh, Dennis Nocton in Roscommon in the cabinet. Um, Tony McLaughlin needs to be, uh, should be commended and his staff actually have worked very diligently on this particular issue over a period and it's very difficult to get a private member's bill through without the approval of the government. I've been trying for some time to get a bill on registration of wills. Uh, very frustrating actually to say the least because governments come and governments go and then you're making progress with one government and then the next government comes in like John Burton, uh, minister, former minister. She declined to take the bill, even though Brian Lenhan, in a previous government, agreed to the bill, and that's very frustrating. But in this particular case, having requested Tony McLaughlin, who was the government uh, TD, to push this private member's bill, I know that all the other TDs in uh, Sligo Leitrim were in favour of this particular uh, legislation, as was a tremendous organisation called the Love Leitrim Campaign. And Scott Coombs is here from that organisation, from Manor Hamilton. He's a member of the Legislative Committee of that. I know that people like uh, Deputy Mary Bohan knows the outgoing Cahirlick of Leitrim County Council. And all the members of Leitrim County Council have proved uh, and supported uh, the opposition to fracking in County Leitrim in that particular region, as did members of Roscommon County Council. Uh, I commend them for their support for this particular issue or op opposition uh, to fracking uh, as such. And it is a very, historically, I know that people are very anxious that this bill would be uh, brought into full legislation before the summer recess. And I'm quite confident, I think you would be Minister, that this will be signed into law in the not too distant future. Um, to say, if he default supports this private member's bill, prohibition of exploration and extraction of onshore petroleum bill 2016 been brought before the House today, which legislates for the pro prohibition of fracking activities. Hydraulic fracking, fracturing or fracking involves pumping fluids into shale deposits at high pressure to shatter rock and release natural gas held within. Fianna Fáil, Fáil, Fáil opposed the use of the fracking technique in Ireland as outlined in our energy policy paper published in April 2015. There are potential significant risks to our natural environment due to the pumping techniques and the fate of the fluids used in the drilling and fracturing processes. The possible risks to our drinking water from fracking are simply not acceptable, nor is the possibility of serious damage to our reputation as a high-quality food-producing nation worth risking. The quality of the water in the River Shannon and elsewhere could be at risk in this particular regard and would affect both our tourism industry and our agricultural industry. No commercial licence for fracking has been issued in the Republic of Ireland, and the government is awaiting the outcome of the EPA study expected in late 2016 before deciding on definite policy. This bill will ensure that this does not happen. Fianna Fáil have concerns about the independence of two, a two-year study into fracking because of the involvement of a consultative firm, C.D.M. Smith. This company has advised an 
on exploration and gas extraction projects in the United States and Europe and will work in conjunction with bodies including UCD, Queen's University and the British Geological Survey to compile a series of reports next year on fracking. France, Germany and Scotland have all banned fracking in a response to these risks. We are not willing to subject our communities to any potential risk which could undermine the integrity of their water supply or the natural environment in which they live. As a result of these risks, Fianna Fáil are, are demanding a ban on a fracking activity in Ireland and supporting passage of this bill, which actually does ensure that this does not happen. The Australian, Australian energy company Tamburn Resources had intended to commence Ireland's first exploratory <coughs> fracking project in Fermanagh, but is now suing two departments within the Stormont Executive after its plans were rejected late last year. Now, it's very important uh, that the government here, uh, in conjunction with the Northern, uh, hopefully an Northern Executive, which will hopefully be established in the next few weeks, will work together that there should be joint legislation in both sides of the border to prohibit fracking in the island of Ireland, Ireland because if there's fracking in Fermanagh, it will affect the resources here in the Republic. Fracking has occurred in the United Kingdom and it has created, I understand, small tremors in different locations. Fracking in the United States of America is a completely different situation because of the vast size of the United States of America compared to either the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland or the Republic. And the technique that's used is very damaging and the actual chemicals that are used to extract the gas are very damaging. I don't think it's a particularly economic uh, way of extracting gas. Certainly onshore it is very, very damaging. And, and it's a question, it is onshore. It doesn't prohibit uh, drilling for gas offshore, uh, which has been very successful, uh, as we all know. But the people of Leitrim uh, mounted a very strenuous campaign and I want to reiterate again uh, the Love Leitrim campaign, which was uh, a group representing people throughout the length and breadth of County Leitrim. They spearheaded this campaign to bring about this legislation, which has been approved and will be passed by this House today. And I'm really hopeful. I know that uh, Deputy Tony McLaughlin and his staff are anxious that this bill will be passed. Uh, by the summer recess. And I'm quite confident, I hope, Minister, that this will happen because a lot of work has gone through the committee system. I'm a member of the committee, which was the select committee of the Dáil that's approved the actual uh, legislation at that level. So it's gone through all the stages in Dáil Airden, as far as I know. Uh, I think it'll go through all stages here. We certainly, as a uh, party in uh, here in, in, in the Shannon, are very enthusiastic and we share. I suppose, in a sense, the credit to uh, Deputy McLaughlin. And I'm delighted that uh, Backbench City has, and his staff uh, have the initiative to bring this bill forward as a private member's bill. I, I know that um, Senator Norris would agree that bringing a private member's bill, I think you were successful yourself, uh, Senator, in getting private member's bills passed through this House over the years. But it's a very strenuous position because you have to rely on the government. You're backward yourself. Well, I've tried my best, but I can tell you it's frustrating. That's why I'm delighted to turn with Lockdown. And he, he felt, you know, it wasn't moving fast enough. But nevertheless, to bring it through the door, through the challenge, as a, a backbencher or a frontbencher or whatever it is, without the backing of the government. The government, if the government didn't want this bill, they would absolutely, or the department would frustrate this as far as they could, and it would never see the light of day. So it's a particularly important occasion, but it's a very important issue. And we have to defend or the integrity of the Green Island economy in relation to our massive exports of, the, of, of uh, food. And again, it's also like linked to our stand on nuclear. We can't allow a nuclear power station in Ireland because the, danger, the dangers are so immense to our industry and tourism. Again, thank you very much, and I commend this bill to the House to be passed so as possible. Thank you. Um, before we proceed, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of Deputy Tony McLaughlin, the initiator of the bill here in the House. You're welcome, uh, Deputy McLaughlin. Uh, next speaker. Next speaker, uh, Senator Tim Lombard. You have eight minutes. Thank you, Chair. I'd um, like to acknowledge the presence of. Will I? Senator. 
No, I just want to be put on the speaking list. Yes, sir, have you done? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry Oaks. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I'd like to again welcome the Minister and congratulate him on his reappointment to this very, very important role. I think uh, this issue has been something that Sean has been very much involved in, so I'm sure his knowledge is something that we're very, very aware of here today. This is a very important piece of legislation, and like yourself, Chair, I'd like to acknowledge the presence in the Chamber here of Deputy Tony McLaughlin, who spearheaded this bill and has really driven this bill on in the short few months of this government. It's an amazing legacy in so many ways to think that literally 13, 14 months into a new government, we've had this private member's bill go so far and come to this stage in the Shannon itself. And that's in recognition, as uh, Senator Layton said, about the staff that work for Deputy McLaughlin and the ability of his office to ensure that this bill is safely passed through both houses. This is a very important piece of legislation. Every county in Cork has an in Every county in Ireland has an interest in ensuring that this piece of legislation is passed because it does, in many ways, stamp out an issue that has been creeping in to parts of some parts of this country that people were very, very concerned about. Leitrim and Ross Common were mentioned by previous speakers, but other counties have been mentioned regarding the actual proposal expiration of oil and gas through this method, which is unfortunately not really what we're looking for in Ireland itself. We've built ourselves on a green economy. We've built ourselves on providing, in many ways, for our nation through a more appropriate means, a more sustainable means, whether it's solar, whether it is wind, whether it's the actual wave industry itself. And I would like to mention, of course, Merck, the actual research centre in Harbol, now in Cork, and their great work regarding wave, in, wave industry itself and the potential that's there for Ireland. We don't really need this proposal. We don't really need to be going through fracking the way it's been proposed. Fracking doesn't suit this country and doesn't suit this nation. And in many ways, Tony McLaughlin captured that and he put that into this bill and he's now delivered it through both houses of the Oireachtas. And I think that's a credit to Tony and it's a credit to the actual staff and itself. And it's also a credit to the government who listened to a very, very important private member's bill. And that's what we wanted to see in actual our parliaments. We wanted to see the members, whether you are assistant chief whip, to actually bring a piece of legislation forward and bring it through both houses. And that is what today is about. I'm hoping that this bill will pass through this house safely today so it can move forward to the next stage. And that is what I am proposing here today. I fully back the proposal. I think it's a very, very appropriate piece of legislation. And going forward, more legislation like this is very important. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Conway Walsh, you have Thank you, Lasca Herlich, and thank you, Minister, for coming to the House. I too want to acknowledge the work of Deputy Tony uh, McLaughlin and his team in this bill. I also want to acknowledge the huge work that has been done by communities throughout um, this country in, uh, in putting this issue on the agenda. Sinn Féin is opposed to fracking on the entire island of Ireland. We also stand with these communities who have real concerns about the impact upon their environment as a result of the exploratory drill, drilling and full shale gas extraction. Therefore, I welcome this bill and its provisions, which will see a total ban on onshore fracking in this state. I have personal experience in my own area of how people are ignored, mistreated and disregarded when it comes to safety fears around onshore and offshore gas exploration. Although fracking was not involved in the case of Shell at, at the Belnaboy site, the treatment of local people who expressed concerns was appalling. Let no one be under any illusion. There is no benefits to fracking, to allowing fracking in this country. We see that in terms of, of the Corb gas project again. I live beside it. We have unemployment of 30% and over 30% in the area, while billions of our natural resources are taken out by private companies. We haven't won red cent from it. We have still huge immigration continues. People cannot get a job. And the first people to be laid off the project even were, were local people. So let no, nobody be any, any under illusion. And that's why I would urge communities to stick together and to stand together, and, and counties to stick together and stand together on this issue. I welcome this bill's passage through the Dáil and the all-party support that ensured that this was the case. Sinn Féin also wants to impose a ban on offshore fracking 
and therefore to have our entire state fracking free. Further work is needed to form a more legally sound piece of legislation which is outside the realm of this bill, unfortunately. This we hope to achieve in a future bill which we are currently working on. In the Dáil, we withdrew our amendment regarding a ban on offshore fracking, as we believe it will require separate, more extensive legal change to ban offshore. We want to create a legally firm ban on, on, on offshore fracking, which will withstand the attempts of major vested interests to challenge it in the courts. Any simple one-word amendment at this point would have the appearance of action and the reality of a legal challenge. We recognise that offshore exploration is a very different geological and engineering operation to that of onshore fracking. There is, as we know, exploration currently taking place off our shores. We try to cater for this within the confines of this bill, but putting these complex ge geological and engineering processes into legislation needs more extensive drafting. Technology around fracking is changing constantly. We need to ensure that legislation is drafted to encompass these changes. Sinn Féin, despite our concerns around the offshore fracking, sees the bigger picture with regard to today's bill. We do not want to slow the progress of this bill. We do, we do not want to provide any fuel to any possible vested interests who oppose this bill. Put simply, we do not want to see any possible delay to this bill. As we know, it is vital that our onshore fracking is outlawed completely and as soon as possible. The offshore fracking process is used occasionally on a very small scale to facilitate more conventional oil and gas drilling. This is happening at present. We are concerned here with the growing offshore fracking industry used to extract gas as seen in the US. One large scale operation exists at present, but there is further drilling in place. Water flowing back from fracked wells is cleaned up on large platforms near the well by filtering out oil and other contaminants. The treated wastewater is then dumped overboard into the vast expanse of the ocean. Dilution then supposedly re renders it harmless. This, according to company, this is according to the companies at least. A treatment process is regulated by the U.S. Environmental and Protection Agency, but in California, critics led by the Environmental Defense Center have asked federal regulators to ban the practice off the West Coast until more is known about its effects. We need to know the environmental implications of this type of offshore explanation are going to have on our environment. There is no legislation now in place to prevent offshore fracking exploration can happen now. Exploration companies will have a free reign in operating in our oceans. With the present bill, we now hope that this will progress forward as quickly as possible. We need this law in place. We simply need to outlaw what would be harmful to both the environment and on people directly living in the areas affected. Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin supports this bill and are clear in the resolute in keeping Ireland, both north and south, fracking free and hope that this will be this bill will be enacted as soon as possible. Gormaga Tlaska here. Gormaga Tishanador, August Anish, Senator O'Sullivan, you have eight minutes. Thank you. Kahirlock, uh, I'm delighted to stand here today to support the uh, prohibition on onshore uh, hydraulic fracturing bill, uh, Deputy Tony McLaughlin's bill. Uh, Minister, I'd like to congratulate you on your reappointment to your. Uh, new ministerial role and assure you that the Green Party is looking forward to working with you in the future to ensure the future health and sustainability of our country and indeed our planet. I believe we are taking a small step in that direction today by beginning the process of passing this anti-fracking bill in the Shannad. That The bill has made it this far is a testament to the hard work of community groups farmers, local activists, those are organisations working to prevent climate change. In particular, credit must go to Deputy Tony McLaughlin and the activists of Love Leitrim, who are here in the gallery today, uh, who have worked extremely hard to see this bill through. They prepared the bill, laid the groundwork through their campaigns, engaged with farming, rural and urban communities across their country and beyond, and delivered a weight of public opinion including 11,000 citizens uh, signing a petition for the bill in favour of getting rid of this dangerous, wasteful and polluting form of extraction before it gets a foothold here in Ireland. 
Friends of the Earth also deserve a shout out for providing the detail and research on the potential impacts of hydraulic fracturing and have demonstrated that it, is actually, it has actually been an imminent, uh, at an Im imminent threat of deployment. Their consideration of the climate impacts of the technology, which I will address shortly, are also on the agenda, thanks to the work of them and others. This bill has enjoyed universal support as it passed through the Dáil, with not one vote against it uh, at, um, at any stage. I expect that it will receive, and I hope receive, the same reception here in the Shannad, and that is very much to be welcomed. We need to move quickly and decisively on this issue if we are to avoid getting locked into a wasteful and increasingly outmoded system that would be in contradiction to our international European and indeed ethical obligations. I can attest to the opposition I can attest to the opposition to fracking from my own group, uh, the Green Party and the civil engagement group here in the Shannad, and particularly uh, Senator Alice Mary Higgins, who could not be here today, but was eager for me to express her support for the bill uh, under consideration. Fracking, or hydraulic fracturing, as it is more properly known, is in some way a siren song energy technology. We have seen it deliver low energy prices and, fu and fuels with an allegedly low climate impact in the US and elsewhere in a manner that also seems to boost energy independence. For the advocates of gas as a transition, transition fuel, fracking seems a godsend, a way to br make homegrown gas in sparsely populated areas and further damage more polluting fuels like coal and oil. This approach has delivered some energy stability for the US during the recession, but at serious cost to local communities, rural and farming interests, and the long-term health of our planet. The process, when not done correctly, can lead to serious damage to our environment, including groundwater pollution, methane gas releases, and even minor seismic events. However, it's when the process is done perfectly correctly that we see just how far from a solution to the energy crisis that it actually is. At a time when climate change has led to record high temperatures across Europe already, here is an energy extraction technique that uses truly staggering amounts of water and energy in its extraction. We still do not have enough information on the methane release levels from fracking, which were they to succeed just a few percentage points would make fracking as bad for our climate as coal. These are the aspects of fracking that the energy companies focus less on in their brochures as they visit the energy ministries across Europe. This is a very, very far from a free lunch, and I'm glad that we are nipping it in the bud now before it wastes serious amounts of time in the Irish energy debate. I'd like to address that debate now and to widen out today's discussion to consider what exactly is Ireland's energy strategy. We need to get really serious about where we are heading as a country. We are a signatory of the Paris Agreement and a part of the EU 2020 and 2030 energy and climate package, packages, obliging us to radically boost our energy efficiency and renewable energy levels while slashing our emissions. We were all united in our revulsion to President Trump's announcement this month of his intention to pull out of the US um, Paris Agreement. But are we really serious about our commitments under it? The time for transition fuels like gas is over. I'm not saying that they did not play a role in reducing European and American emissions in the short term, but there have been a number of developments over the past decade that have rendered the concept of insta installing expensive capacity and engaging in costly and destructive exploration uh, semi-farcical. We now know that the current level of known reserves is massively more than we as a species can even contemplate touching. We can burn only one-fifth to one-third of the remaining fuel that we know about uh, before we would tip the earth into a potentially catastrophic two degrees Celsius or more increase in temperature. That means one thing, we must keep it in the ground. No new exploration, no new mining, no piping, no fracking, no shale oil, end of. 
The complex mathematics of the climate does not care about our political arguments against this. It doesn't care about our convenience or our resistance to change. We simply cannot argue with the planet any more than we already have. These limits are natural and it's time to stop speaking out of both sides of our mouth on this. Signing a climate pact with one hand while on the other cuts peat for power generation or signs another license for oil exploration. We are at a stage now of risking accumulating massive stranded assets as the world moves on to a post-fossil fuel future. This means a real national mitigation strategy with teeth and a plan for a massive deployment of renewables to replace our existing electricity and transport energy infrastructure. This means not approving the liquid natural gas terminal on the Shannon to import US gas extracted through fracking. At least we risk being, making hypocrites of ourselves and incentivizing the global trade in fracked gas. This mean, brings me to the next brighter part of the new reality. And that is the, pro the final proper arrival of the renewable revolution. Renewable energy has sometimes felt like a fusion power, almost just, almost just 30 years away from being deployable. It seems like we've been talking about solar panels and wind turbines and thorium reactors since Jimmy Carter was in office, because we have been. But what seems to have passed many of us by has been the absolute global explosion in renewable capacity over the past five years. The first term of the Obama administration alone saw more solar panels installed in the US than in all other years combined. China is deploying immense amounts of solar capacity in its bid to cut the growth, its growth in uh, emissions and are driving down prices and dramatically increasing efficiency as they do so. Solar especially now puts out more electricity at much lower cost, so low that it can even compete with coal in certain areas. The fossil fuel industry is dying and they know it. Some are trying to diversify others to rent seek through expensive government lobbying and engineering campaigns that create doubt around climate change. Please conclude. Yep. Others are trying to waste our time and destroy our environment by pushing new wasteful and expensive technologies to access fuel that we cannot even burn. So uh, I'll just skip on. Finally, I'd like to seek um, some reassurance from you, uh, Minister, um, regarding the legal consequences of the EU-Canada uh, trade deal, the Comprehensive Economic Trade Agreement, CETA. We saw little resistance from the government. Senator, your time is up. Um, well well in, up. In conclusion, I'm sorry, Minister, this is an issue that uh, is very important to my heart. And, uh, you know, I, I suppose it's uh, something we, I'd like to go on for a long time. But the bill is to be welcomed, and um, I'm delighted to see you here today. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Uh, next, Senator Norris, you have five minutes. Thank you very much, Lars Gerlach. Uh, I'd like to share the previous speaker's concern about the uh, CETA agreement. I mean, uh, this was uh, debated in this House, uh, and the whole uh, arrangement was, was uh, discarded by Jean and was voted against, uh, largely because of the court structures involved and the fact that commercial entities could sue. And the public good, the public interest, the welfare of the people was regarded as less significant than the, uh, than the uh, profit motives of big international companies. And I would like, uh, in conjunction, uh, w with my colleague uh, to, to ask the minister would give us reassurance that the fracking companies could not use this mechanism to take on Ireland. I mean, there have been the fluctuations in the world oil industry have rendered fracking less significant uh, than it was uh, previously. Um, and um, we all remember these things on television with people in Canada switching on the water and the tap bursting into flames. <laughs> uh, it was very interesting to watch it. Um, but uh, fracking is a very violent intervention in the nat nat natural world. And I note that uh, America uh, and the Environmental Protection Agency say, that's laugh. I mean, Bush stuck in as Environmental Secretary, the former CEO of Exxon Mobil, who was against the whole idea of environmental protection. I mean, Bush is a complete clown. Uh, and he has no interest whatever uh, in protecting uh, the environment. Now, I welcome this bill, but I have certain reservations 
uh, about it. I mean, it was Deputy Tony McLaughlin that introduced the original bill, uh, and I think we should all be grateful to him for so doing. Uh, this bill was sent to, for scrutiny to the uh, Joint Committee on Communications, Climate Action and Environment, and they spent a considerable time on this. They wrote a report for the Dáil, they've suggested various amendments and all the rest of it. And what does the government do? They produce their own bill, completely ignoring the recommendations. You know, they might as well not bother themselves uh, doing it. So that's very worrying. That's very worrying indeed. Uh, the fact that they ignored the Joint Committee's recommendations completely. Now, a number of things that are, 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 are difficult. The definition of hydraulic fracturing. It's narrow. It's weak. It allows for the possibility of the fracking industry developing new techniques uh, for, for, uh, that are not covered by this, this legislation. Uh, the definition of internal waters is inadequate. It doesn't cover surface water, for example, or groundwater. Uh, the proposed sanction of six months prison sentence for, for, for offenders, yeah, but where's the policing mechanism? There's no policing mechanism at all. So that is also worrying. Um, the, the, the absence of a definition of land. I mean, it's a very comprehensive uh, definition of land in the EU Habitats Directive. Why not put that into the, in, into the legislation? Uh, internal waters are listed, but it doesn't specify groundwater at all. I mean, that's also worrying. And among the people who've lobbied me, they've raised uh, these, uh, these concerns. But it is important that we get this ban on fracking, because without this, uh, these operations will continue in places like Leitrim, Roscommon, Sligo, Clare, and other parts of Ireland. And we have to be very careful. I mean, climate change was mentioned. I mean, this is a glorious day. It's absolutely heavenly. Everybody's enjoying it. But in this country, a small island in the north corner of Europe we're enjoying Mediterranean uh, temperatures. I mean, 2016 is the warmest year on record. A record temperatures recorded on both land uh, and sea. I mean, it's, it's wonderful for those of us who want to enjoy it, but it is very worrying. As a result, New York, for example, the state of New York, has had a ban on fracking since 2014 because the Department of Health found that the risks associated with fracking were dangerous for people's health. Um, the Sustainable Water Network, SWAN, uh, shows in its report the risks of water contamination related to uh, unconventional extraction techniques uh, su such as, as fracking. And I quote, due to many, the many documented impacts on water attributed to hydraulic fracturing for shale gas, combined with the absence of an Coherent, effective governance and regulatory framework for the industry in Ireland is a sustainable water network position that hydraulic fracturing should not be permitted in Ireland. It is Swan's view that carrying out of hydraulic fracturing and other shale gas, act gas activities in Ireland is not consistent with the achievement of good status for our surface waters or groundwaters, nor with the prevention of deterioration in water status, and therefore should not be permitted in the context of meeting EU water framework directives and groundwater directive objectives. Now, with regard to the question of spills of chemicals, the information that we've gathered already is extremely worrying. Um, the spills of additives and hydraulic fractions, these are chemicals uh, that, that are being used. Uh, during the chemical mixing stage, the hydraulic fracturing water cycle have occurred and have reached and impacted drinking water sources. So we have direct evidence that the introduction of chemicals into this process has actually contaminated water sources. That's a very worrying point. Uh, the spills were caused usually by uh, human uh, error or equipment uh, failure. And this is a company with a complete lack of monitoring. They don't monitor the spills at all. So how do we know where we are? Where are? Well, I can tell you where they were in Bradford County. Time, Senator. Oh, thank you. Just finishing. I'm very grateful, last Gaelic. In Bradford County, Pennsylvania, well blowout resulted in a spill of approximately 10,000 gallons of produced water into a tributary of Towanda Creek. Um, and uh, the largest volume spill identified in this assessment occurred in North Dakota, where approximately, and I'll end on this, this astonishing figure, approximately 2.9 million gallons. That's 11 million litres of produced water spilled from a broken pipeline and impacted surface water and groundwater. I can't think of better arguments uh, to reject uh, fracturing uh, in this country. Thank you very much. That's Thank you, other. Senator. I have uh, no other members offering, so I will call on uh, the Minister to conclude. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to thank all senators for their contributions here today on this very important bill and uh, take, also take this opportunity to commend uh, Deputy McLaughlin for his work uh, and as most speakers have stated the local community groups uh, like Love Leitrim and Leitrim Roscommon and elsewhere uh, who have brought this issue to the fore, who have lobbied, who have campaigned, who have uh, proposed that their local elected representatives at, at county council level uh, would pass and agree motions uh, at their local authorities and also obviously the campaign uh, in the run-up to a, a, a number of elections which has achieved widespread cross-party support. Indeed, I haven't met anybody yet or certainly nobody publicly who has stated in either chamber uh, that they agreed with fracking or were supportive of, of, of onshore fracking and that, that is, has to be welcomed. A few of the points that um, people have raised. Uh, Acknowledge uh, Senator Layden's support uh, for Fianna Fáil for this bill, and uh, certainly was reciprocated in the uh, in the in the in the doll as well. And uh, I, I again, I agree with your concern about the possible impact of fracking were to go ahead on our waters and the Shannon and our pristine waters, and the impact on our environment. And again, you acknowledge the the work of uh, of uh, of Love uh, Leitrim. And um, yeah, the concerns that you've recognised are, are raised in the EPA uh, research programme and by uh, Deputy McLaughlin's bill. Um, um, Tamarin's licensing option is no longer in place. Uh, no no drilling activity uh, was allowed under this option, and with the enactment of this bill, uh, no license to allow fracking can uh, be uh, granted. And indeed, there was a moratorium for a number of years under under former Minister Pat Rabbit and uh, Fergus O'Dowd. So uh, effectively, there has been a, a ban, but this is, will now be uh, subject to passing on the Shannon uh, and signing into law a legislative uh, ban. Uh, Senator uh, Conway Walsh, uh, again, you, you, you raised the issue of the entire island of Ireland. And this was raised in the doll. I did undertake that if I was reappointed to this position, this position, which I am now, and if the executive is up and running, or when it's up and running, hopefully soon in Northern Ireland, that I will raise it at the cross-departmental uh, uh, meetings. I think it's important uh, to put it on record, the, the, the views and wishes of members here. Um, offshore fracking is, is not an economically viable technology in the Irish offshore, uh, which is very expensive uh, activity. Uh, drilling uh, offshore um, involves very deep drilling. Using, using fracking as a primary methodology would um, uh, make uh, drilling offshore Ireland prohibitively expensive. Uh, that said, I'm not uh, disagreeing with anyone's views on having a debate on this, but I think it's important, as you said and others in the Dáil, that it's important that we maintain this bill as is in relation to a prohibition on the onshore and uh, I think have a debate again on another day in relation to uh, offshore and go through the process of uh, having hearings, hearing from all sides, having independent research and uh, going through the process at a committee. Um, and again, I'd like to acknowledge that, that your party and Deputy, Deputy Stanley withdrew the amendment in relation to the offshore um, uh, <coughs> fracking in, in order to allow this bill uh, to progress. Um, uh, Senator Lombard, again, uh, you commended uh, Deputy McLaughlin, the importance, important legislation, the important that uh, it goes through, and certainly, um, uh, as I said, I'd like to thank um, the, the, the Fine Gael Party as well for their work and their support, and Deputy McLaughlin for his, his work. Um, Senator O'Sullivan, uh, again, you mentioned the importance of the all-party support, the Green Party support, the local communities, uh, the Paris Agreement, and um, obviously are signing up uh, to that, and that the fact that you know we are in a transition to a low-carbon economy, um, natural gas for the time being will play, and fossil fuels indeed will play a part in that transition. We want to try and ensure uh, that we uh, speed up the change uh, to uh, renewables, and it's something certainly that we're anxious uh, to, 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 to see happening. Uh, there will be decisions that will have to be made, for example, at Money Point, uh, which is, a, is, a, is, a, is a presently run on fossil fuels and in, in, in coal powered, um, and that's coming to the end of its lifespan of what's going to be done in, in relation to that uh, important generator uh, of power and electricity. Uh, you've mentioned the, um, uh, the issues um, regarding the research programme, and, and, and they were scrutinised by the Joint uh, Arachnids Committee, um, and therefore they were taken into account in Deputy McLaughlin's bill and welcomed by all parties in the Arachnids. Now, Deputy McLaughlin produced a standalone bill. What we uh, felt as government and advice of the, of the department, uh, the best thing to do was to amend the existing uh, legislation but to ensure that the, the, the bill formed part of that amendment. So that's why the name of it was changed. But we, were, we, we ensured uh, that the original name, the prohibition on the expir expiration and extraction um, uh, of, 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 um, uh, of, of gas was, 
retained. It was important to ensure that the word prohibition was retained. So it was an amendment to the existing legislation to prohibit uh, fracking uh, on shore. Um, yeah, as I said, you know, there will be a period, a transition period in relation to the use uh, of, of uh, renewables, uh, and that's set out clearly in the energy uh, white paper. Uh, in relation to, 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 to CETA, the, the, the CETA agreement cannot prevent a sovereign state legislating in, in, its, in the national interest. Um, and it should be noted that France has already uh, declared a statutory ban on fracking and no move is made against France uh, under uh, CETA. I know that our, our, our Assistant Secretary over this department at the Joint Rockness Committee stated um, that um, Matthew Collins stated on the 31st of January of this year during the committee hearings that the moratorium declared by ministers on any fracking activity in Ireland has been in place since 2011 and continues. No applications have been approved. It would appear that the state has not encouraged any investment uh, in this regard. Um, and his opinion was that the prohibition um, that Ireland is entitled to regulate the area or activity in question without contravening CETA. And that is the device uh, that, that we received uh, in relation to the whole area uh, of fracking. But I do note, uh, obviously, your concerns. Um, Senator Norris, I welcome your support uh, for the bill, and you, you, you touched on the um, whole area of CETA as well. Uh, the text of the bill and the changes to the bill have been agreed with Deputy McLaughlin to ensure that it still retains the prohibition, albeit now as an amendment to existing uh, petroleum legislation. And it, it, it reflects his, his views and the recommendations uh, of the Joint Rockness Committee. And also, I know that he consulted with various groups locally as well who were in agreement uh, with the changes that were, 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 were proposed. Um, also in relation to recommendations, the recommendations uh, of the Joint Rockness Committee, there was four recommendations. Um, one, that the terminology of the bill should be revised, which it was. Two, that an enforcement mechanism should be included in the bill, which it was. Uh, three, that any potential drafting deficiencies of the bill may be best addressed during the committee stage debate in the, in the Dáil, uh, which, they, which they were. Uh, and um, also that the scope of the bill should be expanded to take other activities. Uh, we, we provide a clarification in relation to people have concerns in relation to uh, geothermal uh, technology. So uh, the bill does take into account the concerns that were expressed by the committee uh, following the comprehensive research uh, that, they, that they took. So um, the, 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 um, so I think that covers, that covers the points raised. So I, I'd like to thank the senators for expressing their support for this bill. Um, I hope that we can get it agreed through uh, committee and report in final stages here uh, in the Shannon um, next week, I, I believe it's due, uh, that we can get it to the President for signature. So again, I'd like to thank senators for their support uh, for this very important bill. Gormagov. Um, Minister. Um, now, the question is that the bill be now read a second time. Is that agreed? I think the question is carried. Um, acting Leader, when it is, is it proposed to take committee stage? Next Tuesday. Thank you. Then um, I, call on the, I call on the Acting Leader uh, to move the suspension of the sitting until 5 p.m. I propose moving the sitting until 5 p.m. Is that agreed? Thank you. Gorham